Hello everyone, this is Orlando from A Collector's Dream. And today I wanna to do a video um, about the first cards that I've ever collected. This was the, uh, the first packs that I actually bought. And um, I'll tell you a little bit of a, a story about it. But I do wanna do this video for Pepino Man. And the reason I wanna do it for Pepino Man is because I just love his videos. I, I love his style, he's funny. And the main thing is his collection. His collection is uh, a lot of raw cards. And basically that's how my collection had been for all my life, except until recently that I started uh, grading some cards. I did grade, of course, my Mickey Mantles and things like that many, many years ago, my most valuable cards. But most of my cards have remained raw. And um, that's what I like about Pepino. Pepino just uh, looks at his cards and touches them and plays with them. And that's what cards were made to be for. So I just wanted to show you today uh, how I started with my collection and uh, a few of the people along the way that um, were friends of mine and also collected with me when I was young. So my first set, first cards that I've ever collected in my life were the 1970 Tops cards. I bought these cards, every one of these cards in this box, I bought them at a little drugstore where I used to live in Miami uh, from Northwest 7th Street and 30th Avenue. And the drugstore was called Budget Drugs. I went to school, I went to elementary school uh, right there, it was at the corner of the uh, elementary school that I went to, there was a little drugstore. And after I had uh, after I got out of school, you know, my parents, of course, they always gave you money for lunch. And in those days, the packs were five cents. Later on, they were 10 cents. So what I did was I, I would, um, you know, go to the, uh, while I waited for my sisters, because I had to walk them home from school, I would go to, the, to Budget Drugs and get a few packs. Whatever I had left uh, money-wise, I would get some packs. And the reason I started collecting was uh, my friends, um, I had four friends that lived with, uh, lived uh, across the street from me, and they played uh, baseball. And, you know, this is one of my friends, Jose Vasquez. Uh, there were four brothers, and their father was a baseball coach, a Little League coach, and I played Little League with them and their dad. Um, basically, you know, for a few years, I wasn't a very good player, but I was uh, an outfielder, and I also pitched. Um, and this was the youngest son. There were four kids. Um, they were uh, Pedro, we called him Pete. There was Robert. There was Andy Vasquez. And then there was Jose Vasquez, which was the youngest one of them all. And Jose actually made it to the minor leagues with the Yankees. And this is his minor league card. You can see he resides in Miami, Florida. He went to FIU, which is the school I went to also. And um, he was a free agent with the Yankees. Unfortunately, he never got to the big club, but he did play uh, in, in, in minor leagues. So, you know, these really, in my opinion, they're my most valuable cards because they're my, mo my most personal cards, cards that I'll never sell because they were the first cards that I ever collected in my life. So I did want to show you, um, this was Jose. We used to call him Hose back in those days. And um, he was a great player. Uh, he's actually the, the oldest uh, was, the, was the best. Pete was a much better player, but Pete never made it to the majors or, or the minors. But uh, Jose did, I call him Jose. Um, so that's where I, I started collecting and I ended up, um, you know, buying packs and packs and packs of cards. Uh, these cards of course are raw and some of them are ultra raw. They're not even in, uh, in holders and not even in penny sleeves. Um, and I'll tell you a little story about that. Before I get to that, you know, my, my dad and my um, grandfather loved baseball, and they took me to the baseball games in, um, they, they used to play, the Orioles played, and that was my favorite team at the time. And back in those days, in the 70s, the Orioles played 
in um, Miami Stadium, which was a small stadium. But I went to a lot of the games and my grandfather knew one of the players there who was named just like me, Orlando. But his name was Orlando Pena. He was a pitcher for the Orioles back then. And um, we caught this foul ball at one of the spring training games. And my grandfather went over after the game. And in those days, you can just go right there, especially for spring training, you can go right down into the field. He took me down to the field. We went into the dugout and he started, he knew this Orlando Pena. He was a Cuban player. And he said to him, listen, can you just get the ball signed by some of the players uh, of the Orioles? So we did, and I got to meet, this was my first real experience with real baseball players. And I was able to meet all of these guys. Um, there's Boo Powell there. And of course, my favorite player of all time, and still my favorite player of all time, was Brooks Robinson. And here is his very faded autograph he gave me. Uh, when I was probably, I don't know, 12 years old, 10 years old or so, and he signed this ball for me, shook my hand. And after that, I've gotten a few more, a lot more of his signatures and I've met him in, in person many times, but Brooks Robinson was my favorite player. And even though this ball may not be worth much money to me, it's one of the most valuable pieces of my collection because it came from my grandfather. Uh, there's uh, Ellie Hendricks, Elrod Hendricks was the catcher at the time. Um, I got a few more autographs I just can't read anymore. This was, I think, Paul Blair, um, Al Bumbry, and a few other players. Some of these, unfortunately, have been wiped out because there was another autograph in there, and I think that was Jim Palmer, but I'm really, I forget, you know, because in those days, you know, these were not worth much. So it was a foul ball I got at the game, and I literally played with this ball. You know, me and Jose, and his brothers literally threw this ball around. I went around and showed it to everybody in the neighborhood, everybody that I knew. And unfortunately, you know, some of the autographs got, you know, as you can see, all scuffed up, all, you know, unreadable in some cases. It had some more autographs, but they're gone. Um, there was an autograph there, and I don't recall who that was. And there was a few other autographs, but you know, again, they were, mostly they got destroyed. But this to me is the most, one of the most valuable pieces in my collection because I personally got this when I was a kid. And that, this is what got me excited about baseball. You know, seeing the players, getting their autographs, meeting them and talking to them. And, um, you know, with my four friends, uh, Pete, Robert, Andy, and Jose, um, we collected cards. So, what I, what I would do is I'd go down to Budget Drugs and just buy packs and try to build a set. And this was the first set I ever built. And a little story about this set is that uh, these cards were later found. Uh, I thought I had lost these cards. I, um, when I moved out of the house when after, after I finished uh, college, I uh, moved away from Miami. And um, my, my dad called me one day and told me, uh, or my mother actually was the one that called me and said that my dad had found my box of cards. Now these cards were in, I had four, four three or four shoe boxes full of cards, all sets that I had bought from PAX and built. And I had the 71, the, the 70 was my first set, the 71, 72, 73, and 74. All of those cards, plus a few older cards that I had traded for, some 68s and 69s that I had traded with my friends, with the Vasquez brothers. Uh, and I had a, you know, a bunch of those cards. So this was the first set that started my collecting. But after that, this was the set that got me back into collecting. Because once my mom called me, I drove down from Tampa to check out the cards that I remembered having when I was a kid. My dad was gonna throw them away and my mother said, no, 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 don't throw it away, call him. So about almost uh, 15 to 20 years after I left my house, 
And after I stopped collecting, I became a collector again because of this set, because of these cards that were actually found again by my mother and my father. So uh, I just wanted to go through some of these and show you. These are in really, really nice condition because what I've done with these is they got out of the shoe box. I put them in this box. Initially, uh, I went through and I pulled out all of the stars that I could find. In, the, in those days, the main stars. And then um, I put them back in the box. A few years after that, I actually started putting them in top loaders. But as you can see, I never finished putting them in top loaders. So this is really the, the fourth time that I have actually handled these cards since 1970. They had been sitting in, in the shoe box for all those years, and then they've been sitting in this box for the rest of those years. So after watching some of Pepino Man's uh, raw cards and how he handles it, I just felt I had to pull out those cards and just kind of revisit those cards, relook at those cards. And I'm gonna show you some of those cards today. Uh, this is the entire set. This is the high number. I did put the high numbers on holders. They're all in really, really good condition because they really have not been handled at all in 20 years. Or now, in even more than that, now in 50 years. Uh, so this is some of the cards. You know, I'm just going to go through a little bit and pull them all, pull out some of the, uh, the cards to just kind of show you. I pulled these right out of packs many, many, many years ago, back in 1970. Built the set by trading with my friends. And uh, ha has been in this box forever. Like I said, I pulled out the major stars. But I wanted to give you just an idea of how these cards actually look when they just came right out of those, those packs. And they're all in really good condition. Some of them I did have rubber bands around it, so you could tell. Because what I did was I had them by teams. I would put the team card on front and I'd wrap them in a, in a, in a rubber band. And that's how they were found in that shoe box. But most of the cards, you know, are in really, really nice condition. And you could see them here. I have, had, I have gotten a lot of them graded. A lot of the stars have been graded. You can see them in my, uh, in my other videos, in my grading videos. But I wanted to show you just uh, some of the cards that are in here. Just, this is the entire set. You know, again, a lot of these are never been touched in many, many years. So you can see that they're in really, really nice shape. And I have pulled a lot of the stars out. I did get them graded and some of them graded pretty nicely. So uh, again, this is like the fourth time I've ever gone through this set. I really haven't had a, I really haven't looked at them too much. Once I pulled them out, here's a Ron Santo. I probably should pull him out of there. He's a Hall of Famer. He wasn't a Hall of Famer back then, but he's a Hall of Famer now. So some of these cards, I'm, I am gonna go through and just pull some of these out. Uh, but like I said, most of these you're going to find are just going to be the uh, the common cards. But you could see it probably had a little rubber band around it because this is the team cards. I put those in the rubber band with all the same players from that team. And these were found in that box that I put, it, put them in there many, many years ago. And I was able to put some of these in in penny sleeves. But most of them are still exactly how I found them, exactly how they came in my box. And that was raw. I'll call them ultra raw because they've never been in a penny sleeve. None of these cards have ever been in a penny sleeve. This is exactly how they came out of those packs. And you can see that they're really, really nice cards. Of course, the centering issue is always a problem with these, but for the majority of the cards, they're, they're in beautiful, beautiful condition from being from 1970. So these are, like Pepino Man likes to touch the cards, and, and, and I do too, you know. Sometimes you want to touch them, you want to see them, you want to smell them. And like I said, these cards have not been touched now maybe three or four times ever 
since they were put in this box back in 1970. I'll call them ultra raw. They're, they're not even in penny sleeves, which they should be. So I took them out. I'm going to buy some sleeves. There's a cepeda in there. See, I left some of the stars in there because I pulled out the major stars, but I didn't pull out all the stars. I definitely got to get him in a penny sleeve, at least a penny sleeve. Uh, but I wanted to just kind of give you a, a look at what got me started into the hobby. There's a Gaylord Perry. I do have some stars in there, and they are in nice condition. Look at that. It's a little off-center there, but other than that, you know, this one's got a little ding on it. Of course, you know, I was a kid. I was a kid when I had these cards, so a lot of them are going to be a little bit, you know, dinged up, but the majority of them, since I put them straight in the box from the pack, and have left them there all these years, they're just the same as they were. You could see that probably had a rubber band on the team cards, and that's how they were found, with the team cards, and then all the other cards from the team were right behind it. There's a Jim Hunter card too, Catfish Hunter. Um, you can see I haven't gone through these cards many, many, many years, or I would have pulled this out of there. I did pull out all the maze and all the main other cards out of there. But I did leave still some in there. Uh, Cookie Rojas, Jennifer Gosey, all completely raw, ultra raw cards that have never been taken out of the box. And that's what they all look like. I have the entire set in here. But I really, really like to, you know, sometimes just go through them and then just, you know, touch the cards, feel the cards. You know, once I got back in the hobby, after I found, my, my mom found this lot, um, there was another friend of mine that, um, that I knew, and he actually had a little sports card shop in Tampa. And I really uh, got to know him. He was a good friend of mine for many, many years. And that's Alex Ojea. Alex Ojea uh, played for the Cardinals, uh, minor league and I, I think he did play a little bit in the major leagues uh, he was a very good friend of Todd Zeal so I was able to get some autographs of Todd, Todd Zeal through Alex and Alex owned a card shop in Tampa Florida for for many years and I really lost track of him but you know I consider these in my personally some of my more valuable cards because these are the cards that I will never sell these are the cards that I pulled out of packs when I was a kid. And I put them in this in, in, together, made the set, put them in the box, and that's where they've remained. There's a Tony Oliva. And that's what they looked like when they came right out of that pack and they were put in the shoe box. And then after the shoe box, I put them in numerical order and I put them in this box. And they've been sitting in this box for all these years until I'm pulling him out right now. And um, I wanted to show you some of these. Uh, and again, I wanted to show these to Pepino Man because he loves the raw cards, you know, ungraded, not even holders. You know, people are probably cringing right now that I'm just touching these cards and, and just, there's El Elrod Hendricks. That's one of the autographs that I got on the ball. He was one of my favorite players. In those days for the Orioles, the Orioles was my favorite team because they did play spring training in Miami. Um, but um, again, in my opinion, these are my most valuable cards. Oh, look, I got a Joe Morgan. Now I did put Joe in the holder here in, in, a, in a penny sleeves, which is what I did for most of them. But I pulled the big stars out of this box. But as you can see, there's still some stars left in here that at least need to get them in. Here's a Larry, Larry Boa rookie. Boy, that, that's in good shape too. Some of these are really, really nice condition. They haven't been touched in so many years, but I wanted to go through them today um, just for nostalgia purposes. And uh, since I watch the Pepino Man videos, and how he just loves the cards and just touches the cards. I figured, you know, I got I to gotta get back to doing that and enjoying the actual cards. These are just cardboard. There's nothing glossy here. And these can be damaged very easily, but 
you know, like I said, they're in great condition. Probably should get some of these uh, graded eventually, but I've sent in most of the stars and you'll see those in my grading video that should be coming back soon. But I wanted to, should, that should be coming from SGC soon. But I just wanted to kind of go through some of these, show you, show you the set, show you the cards that I literally pulled out of, of packs years ago and put in holders or, or not put in boxes and they were sitting there. And they've been sitting there for so many years. Like I said, this is probably the fourth time that I've gone through these cards that I've even handled these cards. There's a Raleigh Fingers. You know, so um, I'm going to give you a little quick look at some of these. And just to let you know a little bit about the history of my collecting. And here's a Willie Star Joe. Look at that. I should have pulled that out. Probably should have sent some of these to get graded. This one I did put in a little old holder, an old uh, penny sleeve. And some of these I do have in the penny sleeves. I guess, oh, these were the Sporting News cards. Yeah, that's what I did. I put the sporting news cards. Probably some of the stars are going to be in the holders. But I haven't uh, touched these cards in probably 20 years. There's my favorite player of all time, Brooks Robinson. And these, this is the sporting news all-star cards. The entire set, except for the main big stars, which I pulled out. But all these came out of, of the... Of packs, as you can see, a lot of these are going to be off-centered. Uh, you know, some of them may have little dings in it. You know, I, of course, I didn't pull the the complete set, so some of these I probably traded with the Vasquez brothers back in those days to complete my set. You know, and they were four brothers, so they didn't take as good care of their cards as I did. I had two sisters, so they never touched my cards. Uh, there's Jim Palmer. Uh, there's the P Rose. No, I actually didn't pull many of these out of it. I got to get some of these stars out of this. Didn't realize I had so many of stars still in here. Here's the Reggie Jackson. There's the Carl Yastrzemski. There's an Aaron in here. Look at that. Like I said, I didn't even know they were in here. I hadn't gone through this box in so many years. And there's the Frank Robinson. Johnny Bench. Juan Marichal, you know, these were just pulled out of packs my, from myself. And like I said, I haven't gone through this in a long time, but it's always fun to go through these cards, look through them and go back and reminisce and think about the old days when I was uh, about 12 years old, buying packs, putting them in numerical order, or actually I put them in teams and then went through these. There's the Bobby Bonds, look at that. So off centered, but you could see the condition on these cards are incredible because they've been in this box for so many years without even being looked at or touched. I've been in the dark in my closet, you know, so there's a checklist. I do have some, some that I probably marked because I remember marking the checklist going through there's a Felipe Lou card and uh, little team cards. A lot of the team cards are going to be a little damaged because I did uh, put them on the top of the packs or the top of the stack with the uh, the players from that team behind it. And that's how I found them in the shoebox. That's how my mother found them in the shoebox wrapped by team. And I had them all. I had all the years together. So I would have 70, 71, 72, 73, and 74s all together. There's the Astros team card. All together in, in, in those shoe boxes by teams. So um, just gonna give you a quick look at all of these cards as I go through here. First time I've seen them in many years, there's Roy White. Most of these are going to be the commons. I pulled out the big guys. Well, I thought I pulled out the big guys. There's still some big guys in there. And I got to get those in some type of holder. Oh, there's a Tony Perez card. Yeah, I, I got to go through this. After this video, I'm going to go ahead and put some of these in penny sleeves. Since I hadn't done that, I just put, looks like some of the high numbers. There's my Orioles. 
Willie Davis. You know, there's the Gil Hodges. And again, these are gonna be in, in nice condition because they've never been touched. Just like my 71s and my 72s and my 73s and 74s, all those were from my original car, original collection that my father found in a closet and my mother told him, don't throw them away, call him. And I came to pick them up. There's my Yankee card. You can see the, the ones that are gonna be the most damaged are the team cards, because that's the way that I had stored them. There's Bernie Williams, but different with Bernie Williams. And there's Jim Bunning. So I still have some Hall of Famers in here that I probably should pull out, and I will be pulling him out. There's Boop Powell, one of my favorite players in those days. Like I said, I met him, got his autograph. You know, here's a, here's a Dodgers team. You can see a lot of those are gonna be a little bit, um, they had like a rubber band around here and things in the corner. But um, I'm trying to be careful with these because some of these will grade pretty high And they're completely raw. And you know, what I did was I finished uh, whatever I did not get out of the packs, I ended up trading back in those days with the Vasquez brothers. Uh, they were four, four guys, four kids. So they all bought, bought cards and I ended up completing the set. There's the Bobby Mercer. I ended up completing the set through trading. That's the only way you would get them back then. There really wasn't any way to get them I guess you could, but for the main part, I, I for the main thing, I traded them. And that's kind of what they look like. Untouched for so many years. I'll go through some of these real quick. There's a curved flood in here. So there's some good guys still in here, and I'm gonna end up pulling them out after the video, but I, I just wanted to get them out of the closet Pull them out, take a look at them, show them to Pepino Man and you guys so everybody can take a look at my original collection from the old days. There's a Rod Carew, a nice Rod Carew. Oh, this is a little dinged up, but still a nice card from back in 1970. So this is the entire set. Most of them are packed fresh. Some of them were traded. Here's this, the All-Star World Series. This was when the Mets won the 69 Mets, which was an incredible uh, thing for the Mets to win it. They were such an underdog team, but I remember that World Series vividly. And they had Tom Seaver, Nolan Ryan, and a lot of incredible players back then. So there's a Luis Aparicio, a nice Luis Aparicio card. Again, these, I gotta put these in holders or at least put them, I won't keep them as raw, uh, ultra raw like they are right now. I'll get a chance to put them in some type of penny sleeves. Now there's the Lou Pinella Gold Cup card and just a bunch of uh, Tony Taylor, how King, a few other ones here. There's the Lou Brock right here, look at that. That's the Lou Brock. See, so I did put some of the stars in holders, but for the most part, they are just how they were found back in those days. I'm gonna give you a quick look at some of the rest of them, just kind of show you the set quickly. Look at this guy with the sunglasses back then the only guy in the set that had sunglasses. There's Camilo Pascual. He's a Cuban player, I really liked him. I got his autograph. My sister worked with the, uh, the daughter of uh, Camilo Pascual. So just kind of flashing through some cards for you so you can get a quick look at what this set actually looked like. And these, when they were just out of the packs, this is how they came out. A lot of them were like this, miscut. There's nothing you can do. The old cards, not only were they miscut, but you could see some of them, they're different, a little bit bigger, a little bit smaller. They were not perfectly 
cut. There's Bill Lee, Spaceman Lee. And so when you're dealing with vintage cards, there's Paul Blair. I got his autograph back on the, in this baseball many years ago. But when you're dealing, there's a big Bill Buckner rookie. When you're dealing with old cards like this, you know, they're very difficult to get them centered. Uh, they're very difficult to, to get them all, you know, they're all kind of different size. You can see in the, in the box, some are a little bigger than others and some are a little smaller than others. There's a checklist. But that's how they were printed. They were not made to be collected in those days. They were made for kids to play with them. You'd throw them, you'd, we'd flip them, we'd, we'd trade them. Uh, and that's pretty much what we did with them. There's a Luis Tiant. Look at that Pepino, ultra raw. Luis Tiant, never been put in a penny sleeve. This is just how they were, came out. So I'm gonna go through just a little bit here. Oh, Fergie Jenkins is in here. Again, I'm gonna to have to pull some of these out because these could actually be graded and graded pretty nicely. But I haven't had an opportunity to go through that. I, I've basically been going through a lot of my uh, big stars and getting those graded. So I'm gonna continue a little bit more with these and just kind of show you this set. If you want to see the, the big stars, you'll have to look at my grading videos on that because those majority of those are being graded or they were in that other box. There's Joe Torre. Uh, let's move on a little bit here. and Let's take a look at this. This is the playoff games for the Mets. I think I pulled game one out because that, that I'm sending that to be graded. That was either Ryan or Seaver. Uh, the Mets so I pulled some of these out already. This is when the Orioles went in there. That's, well, I was a big fan of the Orioles back then. And unfortunately, they ended up losing to the Mets. They beat the Twins. So there's Burt Campaneras. Again, these have are going to be in really, really nice condition because I've never taken these out of the box. They were in a shoe box and then they went directly into this box and they've been in this box ever since. Like you see, I've never even put penny sleeves on them. Look at that, that's a Ted Williams. I did put a sleeve, I did sleeve up the Ted Williams. There's the one mare show, raw and ultra raw. <laughs> Gotta get this one sleeved up, that's a beauty. And, and I'll be doing that probably later on after I do this video. There's a Reggie Smith. Uh, what a sleeved up here, that's Steve Carlton. I did sleeve that one up. So I'm gonna show you a few more of these. I'm just gonna go through showing you the entire set from 1970. I don't wanna make this video too long but there's 720 cards in this set. And in those days, it was very difficult to put a set together. And like I said, I bought tons of packs, tons and tons of packs, and I traded my doubles. And later on, when I became a dealer, I sold off a lot of the doubles. Manny Moda. So I, there's a Phil Necro. So a lot of the, pretty much every, all the doubles, I sold them off many years ago, and I kept that set. There's the Al Oliver Gold Cup card, or rookie card. There's Billy Williams, Ralph Gar, rookie, Ted Sizemore. So I'm just gonna quickly, there's a Tommy John. I should probably pull these out. And I'm gonna go ahead and take care of this after this. I'm not gonna leave them this raw in here because I definitely now don't wanna get them damaged. Here we go, look at this. This was my actual list, my actual checklist when I was a kid. Look how neat I checked these things off. And this was the checklist that I used to collect a set. And you can see there was some that were missing couple missing there and I ended up, you know, uh, getting those later on 
or trading for those later on. So I'll continue to just show you a few cards here. And I hope you enjoy my videos. This, this one may be a little boring and I'm not showing the nice, super expensive cards like I, like I was showing before. But in my opinion, these are my most valuable cards because these were the cards that I myself had when I was a kid. And I'll never sell these cards. I probably will never sell these cards. I never say never, but I don't intend on selling these cards because this is the cards that give me the memories of, I remember pulling them out of the packs myself and putting them in order and trying to build this set. My first set, this was the first set I ever built. And this was the set that got me back into the hobby. So it's a double, double whammy for me. Double whammy, like, like Pepino says, says, whammy, whammy, whammy. So this was to me what got me into the hobby and what got me back into the hobby. Once these cards were found, I became an, uh, another collector again when I knew there's the, the Macarver when my mom found them, I became a collector again. Here's the, uh, the batting leaders and, and the team, team leader cards. Some of these I actually did send to be graded, but some of these I did not. And there's the P. Rose and Clemente, McCovey, Ron Santo, Tony Perez, three Hall of Famers. Look at that, I should get these graded. That's a nice card there with McCovey and Aaron. And again, this is the, uh, uh, this one's got crease on it, but that's uh, Reggie Jackson. These have creases on them. These I probably traded with the Vasquez brothers because they mishandled their cards a lot. And I didn't. I kept mine in good condition. But if I was missing some cards, I would trade with them and, and I would get them. I have, so I, I, I think I have a better one of this that I am sending in to be graded because there were some doubles in, in here. I pulled out the better ones. But uh, for the most part, these were the ones that are from my original collection that I still have. I thank my father and I thank my mother for never throwing these cards away and letting me know that they still had them. So this is it. This is my 1970 set that I've had since 1970 that I bought at the budget drug store. And boy, did I chew a lot of gum with this. And my, my sisters were the ones that really loved the gum. This is Tommy Hagee. They really, really enjoyed it. I used to have packs, I mean, piles of gum, and they used to stuff them in their face. You know, there's a John Blue Moon Odom. They used to really have, you know, our teeth must have been terrible back then because we all chewed these gums. And uh, let's see here. And this was my Orioles team. Of course, this card probably the most beat up because that's the one that I had. Uh, oh no, this is the Mets team. Again, I had the Mets cards. This was a number one card in the set. So a lot of these got beat up. So this is again, the rest of the uh, 1970 set. Here's another checklist. There's the Yastrzemski. Oh, I didn't know why, why did I pull this out of here? That Yaz card needs to be graded. So We'll go through these again and pull some of these out, see what I got, and we'll go from there. There's a Hoy Wilhelm. So there's the Vida Blue rookie card. He was an incredible pitcher back then. One of the best pitchers, had a great career going until the end. So um, anyway, guys, I wanted to give you a good look at my first set that I've ever built. The first set I ever pull, pulled out of packs. Here's a few more of the, these are the high number cards. I guess I didn't go through all of these. There's the Pirates team. That's for John Mangini. He loves the Pirates. So this is Mike Shannon, a great player and people collect him a lot. He's a tough player to get, especially the 71 high number one. Mark Belanger, my Orioles, 
Jim Perry, some more rookies. There's Don Sutton. These are the high number cards. Yeah, 622. Horace Clark. He was a big, strong hitter for the Yankees. So I don't want to make this video too long, but I do want to show you the whole set if I can here. This is Bud Harrelson. So if you want to see the big star names, the big stars, a lot of them have been graded. Go back to my graded video. And you can go back to the video I just put out last a uh, few days ago or last week, which is the ones I sent to SGC. Those are being graded right now. So, um, and this is the last of the ones that I actually sleeved up before I put them in here. And, oh, there's a P. Rose. But this one's beat up. So that's probably why I didn't pull it out. Um... But um, there's Rusty Staub. He was another good player, the best Canadian. And um, a high number checklist card, seven series. So um, as soon as I get the other ones back from SGC, there's Joe Pepitone from SGC. We'll see how they, they those graded. I did send some 1970s over there to be graded. But... Um, Wanted to show you these, go through some of my 1970s, tell you a little bit about uh, my background and my collecting history. And I wanna thank um, the Vasquez brothers who got me started with collecting and who uh, I played with in Little League. And of course, my autograph, baseball, which really, I became a big, big fan once I started going to the games and got the autographs. And that got me into collecting. That's how I got started. And this is the set that got me started collecting and this is the set that got me restarted in collecting again. So I wanna thank everybody for watching my videos. This one was a little bit long, but I felt that I had to go ahead and show that. So Pepino, there's some raw and ultra raw cards for you to see. And uh, for everyone that's watching my channel, please like and subscribe, and I appreciate you watching them very much. Everybody have an awesome day. This is Orlando. Take care, everybody.